In this lesson, you will treat a penetrating chest wound. You will need a halo chest seal and a 14 gauge needle to complete this task. Each of your lungs are enclosed in a separate airtight area within the chest. If an object punctures the chest wall, air may be allowed to enter the chest. If air enters into one of the formerly airtight areas, the lung within that area begins to collapse. Any degree of collapse interferes with the casualty's ability to breathe and reduces the amount of oxygen available for the body to use. An open chest wound can be caused by the chest wall being penetrated by an object. Here are some of the signs and symptoms of an open chest wound. Sucking or hissing sounds coming from the chest wound. When a casualty with an open chest wound breathes, air goes in another wound. The air causes the sucking sound. Casualty coughing up blood. Frothy or bubbling blood coming from the chest wound. Shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing. Chest not rising normally when the casualty inhales. Pain in the shoulder or chest area that increases with breathing. Bluish tine of lips, inside mouth, fingertips, and or nail beds. This is the procedure for managing a chest wound. Expose the area of the chest wound by removing, cutting, or tearing clothing from the wound. If clothing is stuck to the wound, do not try to remove the stuck clothing as this may cause additional pain and injury. Cut or tear around the stuck clothing. Do not try to clean the wound or remove objects from the wound. Next, you will want to seal the wound. Since air can pass through most dressing and bandages, you must seal the open chest wound with a plastic, cellophane, or other non-porous airtight material to prevent air from entering the chest and collapsing the lung. We will demonstrate how to use a chest seal. The edges of the sealing material should extend at least two inches beyond the edges of the wound. Have the casualty to exhale. Tell the casualty to exhale, breathe out, and hold his breath. This forces some of the air out of the chest wound. The more air that can be forced out of the chest before the wound is sealed, the better the casualty will be able to breathe after the wound is sealed. Have the casualty to exhale. Apply the sealing material over the wound. Tension pneumothorax occurs when there is a buildup of air under pressure in the pleural space and the air cannot escape. As the air outside the lung continues to increase, the affected lung continues to collapse. In addition to causing further collapse of the affected lung, the increasing pressure of the trapped air pushes the mediastinum, the mass of material separating the two pleural sacs. This movement of the mediastinum may compress the uninjured lung, major blood vessels, and the heart. You will need to perform a needle chest tension pneumothorax. Here are the signs and symptoms of tension pneumothorax. Anxiety, agitation, and apprehension. Diminished or absent breathing sounds. Increasing difficulty in breathing. Rapid and shallow breathing. Distended neck veins. Abnormally low blood pressure. Evidenced by a loss of radial pulse. Cool, clammy skin. Decreased level of consciousness. Visible deterioration. Loss of consciousness. If you have determined the casualty suffers from tension pneumothorax, you will need to perform a needle chest decompression. You will need a large bore needle and catheter unit, 14 gauge by three and a quarter inches long from your aid bag. Locate the insertion site. The insertion site is located in the second intercoastal space, the area between the second and third ribs, counting from the top, at the third mid-clavicular line, an imaginary line perpendicular to the ribs, approximately in line with the casualty's nipple, on the same side of the chest as the injury. A simple way to find the second intercoastal space is to put two fingers together and slide them from the chest wall until they bump into the bottom of the clavicle. Place the needle catheter just below your fingers and you should be in the second intercoastal space. Insert the needle catheter. Firmly insert the needle into the skin slightly above the top of the third rib into the second intercoastal space at a 90 degree angle. Continue inserting the needle with its catheter covering all the way to the hub. You will feel a pop as the needle enters the chest cavity. A hiss of escaping air under pressure should be heard. Advance the needle catheter. Continue advancing the needle catheter all the way to the hub. Withdraw the needle. Withdraw the needle while holding the catheter in place. The catheter will remain as a means of for air trapped in the chest to continue to escape to the atmosphere. Secure the catheter with the strip of tape. 